Hello and welcome back to part three of my guide to precision farming, I guess is what I should be calling it. Um, yeah, today we're going to be taking a look at the, the function and working of slurry spreaders and manure spreaders to fertilize our fields pre-seeding. Now, I fully understand that that would work differently post-seeding because your sensor would then know how much you need for each crop. But as a rule, I wouldn't probably, certainly wouldn't slurry spread you know, with an injector once I've um, sown the field. And my muck I normally put on grass. So I'm going to use the slurry with the injector on these freshly cultivated fields. And I am going to muck spread on meadows where grass is already growing. Now, from the last um, episode where we looked at sensors and soil samplers, feedback we got was that you need to soil sample to start with no matter what. You can have double sensors on your tractor and if you've not got the soil sample, apparently you don't get no information at all. Even if there's a crop in there and you're using a crop sensor, that didn't give us any feedback. But we went through quite a process of doing it. So uh, if you haven't seen it, go back, episode two, check that out as well. So what have we got today? We've got ourselves identical setups. We've got a John Deere 7R, but this time over here, we have got the sensors on it and we have got the Garant Cot with the injector on the back. I've got to jump all the way over it with the John Deere uh, manure sampling sensor on the uh, on the outlet pipe. Over on this one, we have no sensors. And on the slurry tanker, we have no John Deere manure sensor on the outlet pipe. So what I'm looking at today is, if I have a look in the map, you'll see I have gone and I have paid someone to sample all my fields. Because if, if we need to have them sampled to start with, then we need to do that. So they've all had soil samples taken on them. And we are going to go and slurry in field seven with a sensor on our tractor and the sensor running on the slurry spreader. And then we're going to go in field eight with no sensor on the tractor and no sensor on the slurry injector and see how different it looks in the nitrogen. Will we get a varying shade as we go through where the nitrogen levels are different already and where the soil is possibly different? Although I think these all had the same soil. They don't. We have got a small change in soil, so hopefully we'll see a little change. And what I'm hoping from eight is that we just get a blanket of fertilization state with no variation in it. So to start with, we'll do it with the sensors. Now, I will add in at this point, I have not pre-run any of these tests. I'm recording these tests live as I do it, and that's why I'm saying I'm hoping we're going to see some sort of difference. So I'll start her up. And we need to make sure we are on the tractor. And we are going to put our sensor on for the tractor. So as you can see, Alt-B, uh, it now says turn off crop sensor. So then on here, does it ask us to turn on the, um, the sensor? I'll just do that. So we're going to have automatic application rate. That's going to stay the same. Nitrogen reference value. So if we press Y. Aha, something happened and I didn't see it. It says no values detected yet. Okay, so that's fine. Ah, turn off oh, it's the crop sensor again. So if we turn on... That's down. Had a little issue there with things coming up. And what I want to do is turn it on. Okay, there we go. I fixed my issue. <laughs> I didn't have any slurry in it. I felt sure I'd filled that up before I started. Okay, so we now have 
slowly tank. Full. Our injector is down. Our tank is on. I am just going to cycle through. Just make sure that everything is turned on. Now the auto application is showing you where we need to be. So we are currently at uh, 10 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare and we want to be at or it wants to be at 50 so it's going to do plus 40 as we uh, as we head out that's assuming I've got that all down and correct that wasn't there we go sorry about that uh, as I go backwards we can see we're getting an application so finally <laughs> everything's working so let's head out. Let's slurry the field. Now, as we go across, we should see some different readings on the uh, on the amount required because we should go over some different soil types. There we go. We can see it's changing as we go across the soil. So we're putting in plus 60 kilos of nitrogen. So once I get to the end, bring it up. And it turns itself off, which is beautiful. At least the next one should be a little bit simpler. So if we have a little look at the field, a little closer up, we can see now that because there is no crop in there, it didn't like try and pump in maximum amounts of nitrogen. It just brought it up to a nice, comfortable sort of base level for then our next application to go on. Obviously everything else about the field should stay the same. pH level is the same, so it is just the nitrogen. So next up, we are gonna go jump in our other 7R. Now this has no sensors on anything. So I wanna see if it makes any difference. We have obviously got the information back from the field, from, from our samples, but we're not going to do any censoring of the soil as we're going along and we're not doing any censoring of the manure or the slurry as it's going through the slurry tanker. So, start our engine first. Let's not go through all that again. So we've got everything up and running. And we are getting a reading. We've got nothing on the pipe to control what's coming out. We've got nothing other than our initial soil sample. Now, because we've got the auto application rate, is that going to do it anyway? And if so, would that mean we only need to check the following harvest? It's not perfectly straight, but that's so that's roughly the same as the other. So again, in our map, that's given us pretty much the exact same result. And we didn't put a manure sensor on the tank. So that's telling me we don't need to spend 10 grand on getting the tanker. Because or oh, get the uh, sensor on the tank, because the auto is going to do it anyway. Did the same strip. That one's used uh, forty-one or four thousand one hundred. Yeah, four thousand one hundred and three liters of slurry for this strip, three thousand four hundred forty-four. So maybe, maybe it did use a little, little, uh, a little less. Sorry, this is going to be a bit slow while I sort of digest and do it. Hmm, that's strange. From 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 what I'm getting, the actual extra add-on bits, this bit up here that costs ten grand, has made absolutely no difference because that one has controlled the output pretty much the same way. Down in the comments, you tell me: Am I reading that right? Am I understanding that right? That this made no difference? And it's just an aesthetic? That makes no sense.
we have got 85 kilos 70 65 okay so that's putting out a varied amount then if we go along this one this is giving us 90 85 80 75 so this has given us a varied flow as well Yeah, I'm taking that, that the uh, John Deere box is redundant. That's a 10 grand decoration. At the minute, that's all that's looking to be. So after that somewhat disappointing discovery, um, I'm now over on the grass meadow at field 11. And uh, this is ready to harvest. But I want to see if we can still chuck some muck on it because it has got another growth stage. All the meadows are pretty much grown at the minute. So we're going to see what we can do. Now the soil has been sampled. So I want to see. Yep, so we're going to get that reading for the flow of what we need. Now what I'm intrigued by is how are we controlling the manure coming out of the back? I mean, I, I want there to be control of the manure. That's that's some that's why I, I really wanted manure to be part of the uh, precision farming. So if we open up our door, you can see. If I go back to that one, that's probably what people are more familiar with. Um, I can deactivate automatic application rate. There it is. And then I would have to manage it uh, through some sort of slider control. K&M. But we've got to keep automatic, so do automatic for everything else. But there is nothing else there to say, like, turn on or do or anything like that. So we're in a 6R, and uh, that is on the back. Let's tell you what it is, because I've been telling you everything else is. Let's give it some respect. It is the Brantner TA uh, 12050 power spread. Full of fresh manure. So if we turn it on. We should now be getting a variable spread. It's taken it, so that's good. Now, my test... What I want to do here is to see if once I get to the end if I turn round and I try and spread over the bit I've just spread does the auto variable spread switch off so I've turned that off myself we're going to go over the field this bit we need to spread once we get on here what's happening we're getting the animation which is nice but we're not emptying so that is registering that there is enough baseline fertiliser for this field and as we just go over a little bit it tucks them out as I bring it back in it stops so if I loop around again now bearing in mind, this tractor has no sensors on it either. So we're going to go for a wide berth. Look at the speed that that's emptying. Because then we've got a little strip left. Now if we turn around. Does that slow down at all? Now, it doesn't look like it's dumping. I mean, it lost a little number there at the end. So I think it waited until it sort of got to a spot where it needed to. There we go. We lost some. And then it's uh, going to hold again. 
Now, for other people, I don't know how realistic you, sh you feel about that. I mean, obviously it should be shutting off if we're not spreading. But I like the idea that I'm not going to waste all my manure. Because that's the only trouble. I love doing manure spreading. But I always waste so much. And now I won't. It'll go further. So you will have that aspect. Even with your manure, it will go further. It will be more cost effective. Because you won't use so much. It's a free byproduct. But it's not free because you're paying to pump your, your pigs or your cows full of feed. Um to get the manure, to get the slurry. So if you've got that auto switch off, then, uh, yeah, that's good. I'm happy with that. It's not 100% realistic, but I like that. So I'm just gonna uh, try and pop this bit in in an appropriate part of the video. But after doing both fields completely, field seven with the sensor on and field eight, with the sensor off of the uh, slurry spreader, you can see we're actually getting a smoother application. So the sensor did work. I think just by doing that one strip and seeing the varying states, then doing one strip and seeing the varying states, I did what a lot of people probably do, jumped the gun and thought, oh, that didn't work. But now you can see, if I flick to where our different soil types are, where our different nitrogen levels are. See that the soil where it has needed it in the pattern has got more nutrients or less nutrients. Whereas on the top one, it just pumped out the base 40%, which is what it does. Um, if I do a jump to the instructions here, manure nitrogen sensor, ours looks a little bit like that. So without sensor, it puts out the expected application rate of 40% of the requirement or 40% fertility state on there. Whereas with the sensor, it's given it exactly what it needs in a varying rate. So I just wanted to show that and uh, I'll uh, stick this in probably at the end of the video um, before I sign off, just to make sure the information gets out. I don't want to put it afterwards because that wouldn't be fair. People probably wouldn't see it, you know what people are like. So looking at that, we seem to be getting the same thing on here as we are here. I haven't fully fertilized this one and I'm now wishing I did, but it, this looks like we're getting more of a very variant gradient than just, I went this way and it gave me one result, that way gave me one result, this way gave me that result, and again, vice versa. So the, the variant sensor for the slurry does work. That's what I'm saying. It does work. It, it is worth paying the money so for now i think that pretty much covers how slurry spreaders and manure spreaders are working within precision farming the slurry spreader without any sensor as long as you've got an initial soil sample and then probably subsequent sensors harvest after harvest will always give you a variable flow and an auto rate if you choose to do auto rate but I'm a little bit disappointed, maybe, that that didn't seem to make much of a difference up there. Whether it's just because this is at the minimum it can be, and so is that field. So they're pumped out exactly the same amount because that's what's needed. I'll need to do further testing. I like that you've got the variable flow. And again... It won't pump out if you've already done it, so you're going to save on that. So you've still got that saving aspect. I think we'll have to see how we are after a harvest and then be doing it. And I intend on doing that. I want to go through the whole process of doing this. So uh, I will add in here that none of this works at all if you don't do your soil samples. If you were to play this with precision farming, but without doing the precision farming step one, you're playing it as vanilla. You're going to keep pumping out the fertiliser. You're going to keep pumping out the um, slurry. And you're going to keep pumping out your manure at max. It's just all going to come out as, as if it was base game. These things only come into effect after soil sampling. So I am 
go and do just to see how these things work. I'm going to slurry spread this whole field and I'm going to slurry spread that whole field and then we're going to do variable seeding. We'll see how that works on these fields. Whether variable feeding is my next episode, I don't know. We might do something different. But that is it for episode three of my guide to precision farming. Hopefully it has been somewhat informative. A little, maybe a lot. Um, you may know more about how that uh, sensor on the slurry tank was working. And if... If I'm wrong and in thinking that it's just an expensive decoration, and if I'm right in thinking it will give us a different output next time we slurry with a different um, nitrogen level, let me know in the comments. Because I'd hate to be disappointed with it, because I've been looking forward to this. The manure? Absolutely great. That's doing what I wanted it to do, so I'm very pleased about that. If you have enjoyed this video, guys, please give it a big fat thumbs up down below. If you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, turn your bell notification on, find out when new videos come live. As always, comments and feedback down there. Let me know what you're thinking. You guys have yourselves a wonderful day, and hopefully I'll see you in part four. Bye-bye.